want to just talk about really more what I've been up to. Um, it's been an interesting couple of weeks. Um, Unfortunately, I haven't bought any new rifles, which would be a very nice thing to have done, but nevertheless, can't win them all. Um, right, one thing I've got back here is my P14. Uh, a few of you may have heard me say a few months ago I was thinking about selling it. I did try to sell it, uh, but there's not much interest. Um, I think especially the market, where the market is here at the moment, it's fairly quiet. And also, it's not the best known of battle rifles, with it not, well, it did serve a bit in fairness, but not massively. So, anyway, I got it back at the weekend. I shot it, and we'll get on to that in a minute, about what I thought about it, because I was very impressed. Uh, <coughs> but I just want to cover a couple of things first. Uh, when was it? Not the weekend we just had, but the weekend before. Um, I met Kiwi Ted in London just by the Imperial War Museum. I was down there visiting my missus uh, and went and saw him for a couple of couple of pints. Well, him and Joe as well. That was very nice to meet both of them. Uh, we went out for a couple of hours, put the world to rights and just decided that uh, we need a slightly of the English gun laws. But anyway, that's another <laughs> thing. Um, it'd be quite nice to have some of the equipment he has and even have the opportunity to use it. Uh, great, great guy, uh, dead interesting. Um, I can probably sat there all, all afternoon if I haven't had a, a roast dinner to cook. But anyway, I hope you have a good rest of your trip, Ted, and uh, do the shooting you were telling me about. Okay, um, the next thing is I've uploaded a couple of videos today of where I went over the weekend. I went up further into North Yorkshire and uh, went shooting, um, well for those who don't know North Yorkshire is one of the major sort of areas the uh, army train, um, so they've got bases and ranges all over the place and I'm, as you may know I'm looking at to shoot on one of them like, quite regularly, uh, but we went to a new one I'd never been to before, I think we get to about once or if we're lucky twice a year we get onto this range and it basically simulates wave attack. Now. Um, this wave attack starts at 20-30 metres, the targets can pop up uh, and they'll go out to about, I think it was 450-470, I think the furthest popping up target. And then at 550 metres there was a um, disused armoured person I'll carry with some steel uh, to figure 11 targets that were permanently popped up, uh, so they were up. Uh, and effectively there was somebody in the control room and the chart targets when they got hit got knocked down and then when uh, a couple of seconds later they popped back up, it was probably about 10 to 15 targets. Uh, I've got a video on there, um, it's called Infantry Training Range, um, I'll put that on the link um, below this video. Uh, it's worth seeing just to get an idea of what it was in this big valley. Uh, the valley itself probably eight nine hundred metres long. Uh, itself says target's about halfway on it, or just over halfway. Um, good good solid backstop, so you don't have to worry. You basically probably had a maybe a 45, 55. You had a very wide arc to fire in where targets could appear. Um, and with it being a little bit drier, it was good because it kept, when you in certain spots when you shot and you either missed or your hit kicked up dust, so at least you got a fair idea for the shot. And because it was on the moor, there was quite a lot of wind coming down. Uh, it was amazing. Even the three hundred threes, which we predominantly shot, shot a couple of seven six twos, but that's I'll go into that in a minute. Um, the three hundred threes were getting blown a fair, a couple of maybe a foot or so off target if you're aiming dead centre. But then saying that. It's quite hard with this sort of military uh, rifle sights. You know, you've got, even with a flip up sight, your aperture and your four post aren't particularly fine, so they almost cover the man sized targets sort of three, four, 450 metres. Um, so, you know, you might think you're aiming bang on, but you probably would have wavering a little bit, and also the trigger falls on them aren't the best, as we all know. Uh, but anyway, a bit of correction, and then they had absolutely no problem knocking these targets down. Um, it, just, it was quite impressive. I've not actually sh I've shot once at 600 metres, uh, and it was so windy, uh, and I had such little time actually on the point to shoot that I didn't really get um, I didn't really get much you know much time to get my eye in. So basically. This today, uh, last weekend, sorry, you had your own little 
it wasn't a pit as such, but it was dug down until it was more of a raised table. You could put all your guns, all your ammunition, all your empties. Um, and there was just, just the right amount of people that you could sort of share your pit or yeah, your little table, and three of us in our, in our table. Uh, and you can shoot as much as little as you want. Uh, I think we probably shot 250 rounds between the three of us, so not overly heavy, but um, still a good amount of ammunition to get through. Um, it just it was one of the best ranges I've ever been on. It's probably as close as you'd ever get in this country, unless you had a bigger state, to going out and just pretty much shooting at what you want and having some more sort of real life shots probably a good way to put it. Not down an organised range with certain you know, straight alleys. You know, sometimes um, some people have tracer, so sometimes you saw the old tracer shot flying to past the target you were aiming at, which was quite unusual. I've never seen tracer before. Um, and, well, in, you know, in the flesh until uh, until then. Um, in fact, we actually had a go with a couple. The tank, or oh, sorry, the APC that was at 550, that was uh, quite a, a target for everybody who had um, scoped rifles. There was an engine bay hatch on the front, which either had been taken off or shot off um, over the years. And people were just trying to get it in there. So it's quite interesting watching uh, sort of the orange and I think the red tracer. You could tell when it went in because it just disappeared into this black hole and then if it didn't go in, it generally sort of hit the tank and either sort of sat on the tank and fizzled or pinged off and went in some other direction. So that was, that was brilliant. Um, my next point was, going back to this point, uh, cutting my words out, my P14, it was how well this shot. Um, I wouldn't say this outshot anything, um, but it shot equally as well, and uh, the trigger pull made a lot of difference. I know I always bang on about this, but I think it actually does. Uh, those of you that have sort of more tight rifles probably appreciate this. This is a lot less than the Enfield, a long way, uh, a lot lighter, a lot less creep, and it just breaks a bit cleaner, uh, sorry, a bit crisper. Um, I didn't do particularly well as a number four. I mean, it still was hitting the targets, but I didn't feel as comfortable with it. I don't know if that's because I only shot like 20 rounds with it. Um, and even then, I was, sort of, I was using the battle sight more because I was flitting between targets at 20 metres, and then the next shot was sort of going up to two, 300. So it was a much more uh, a snap shooting situation, but you could get yourself sort of slumped down in the, on the, or in the trench over the table in a real comfortable position, just squeeze rounds off sort of slowly but surely. And generally when he did that, it's sort of connected. Uh, the SMLE though, I think shot equally as well as this. Probably, I say equally, I think this was probably a nicer round to shoot, but the uh, sights on the SMLE, as you know, uh, the post and the V notch, I think they just made for a slightly better shot placement, in, in my opinion. Um, I think it's just because it's maybe slightly finer. So your figure elevens or your man-sized targets effectively aren't, um, aren't obscured. But what was so interesting was just sort of the amount of bullets would drift, and the tracers really, really picked up on this. Um, you know, you'd aim say at a certain point on this APC, you would fire. You see the tracer sort of dropping with its trajectory, which is a lot more than I actually expected to to arc over, but then really just get blown over by the wind because it was fairly strong. So even the, <coughs> uh, the 762 was worse, I won't say struggling, but you could tell how they got blown around. Interesting enough, we pushed uh, my friend's 223 out to about 300. And at 300, once you worked out sort of the deviation with the wind and the, a little bit of bullet drop uh, thrown in, uh, you could hit the targets consistently. But going on much above 300, it really struggled with. Um, yeah, that was quite interesting to see how it how it did cope with that. But all in all, great weekend. I uh, spent the rest of the weekend fixing the Land Rover. That was good fun, got it ready for the impending winter. The weather has turned to shite here. And it's only east of what, 5th of September. So before we know it, it will be covered in snow and it will be freezing our bollocks. Anyway, I'll post a link to the infantry training video, or infantry range training video, so you can see what it was like. Uh, by far the best range I've ever been to and probably will ever ever go to. It just it was just epic. Can't say much more than that. 
Um, so yeah, and we'll see you soon. I've got quite a lot of videos to come up, so keep an eye out on the space. Cheers, guys.